Good morning and welcome to St. John Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Davidson, the shepherd here at St. John. I wanted to welcome you, as we always say here, if you're looking for a church home, welcome home. We're excited to have you, especially today for our daily devotional. It comes to us from Jonah. Hear the word of the Lord. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it, for their evil has come up before me. But Jonah rose to flee from Tarshish to the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and he went down into it to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea and there was a great mighty tempest on the sea. So the ship threatened to break up. Then the mariners were afraid and each cried out to his own God. And they hurled the cargo that was in the ship into the great sea to lighten it for them. But Jonah had gone down in the inner part of the ship. And had lain down and went fast to sleep. So the captain came and said to him, What do you mean, you sleeper? Arise, call out to your God. Perhaps the God will give a thought to us that we may not perish. You know, when I was a kid, I grew up watching Saturday Night Live. I used to absolutely love it. You know, if it was Chevy Chase or... Eddie Murphy, or, you know, I grew up with with Adam Sandler and Chris Farley and and Dana Carvey. And one of the best impressions that I loved on that show was Dana Carvey when he came out and he'd go, not going to do it. I'm just not going to do it. And I used to love that impersonation. Whenever I read Jonah, I just think of that impersonation of God coming to Jonah and Jonah just saying, I'm not going to do what you've called me to do. And he goes even further than saying, I'm not going to do what, you, what you're telling me to do, to go to the city Nineveh and to preach the good news, to preach repentance, to preach the gospel. Instead, he literally leaves his home, goes and buys a ticket, gets on a boat, and heads the other direction to Tarshish. Now put this in common context, what this would look like for us today. Somebody wakes you up back when we could go to church and says, okay, it's Sunday morning, get dressed, we're going to go down the street to the local church. Instead of just saying, no, you know, I'm good, it's Sunday fun day, I'm just not going to do that, I just want to sleep in, or, you know, we've got laundry to do, or whatever excuse you come up with. Instead, you get in the car, you go down to the airport, you buy a ticket, and you fly across the country. All because you didn't want to hear the word of the Lord. It's kind of insane. But this is how serious that Jonah was about not listening to the word of God, not accepting the call that God has given him to do in Nineveh. And so he literally gets on this boat, heads the opposite direction. But God is still good. God still works behind the scenes. This is what it's going to take for get this hardened heart to do his will. He sends a storm, a tempest, and the ship is literally falling apart. And in his rejection of God, he goes and he takes a nap (laughs) of all these things. And as we know the story, the sea gets so bad that they cast lots. The people are scared that Jonah is this almost demonic person. They cast lots and they pick Jonah. And out of this situation, he says, fine, it's me. God must have called me. That's why the storm is going. And he takes Jonah, they launch him out into the sea. And he's eaten by the great fish. Now we just know this story from Bible school as kids. He's eaten by this great fish. And for three days, he's in, for lack of a better term, the belly of the beast. Until he's dropped off, if you will, at the coast of Nineveh to have the most successful ministry that we see in Scripture. Where he goes and he preaches and the king and the entire city, they they, they cover themselves in sackcloth and ashes. But for those three days, I wonder what what, what was going on in his head. What went through his mind in those three days? He must have struggled, rethinking who he was, rethinking the call of God, thinking back on his past when God had called him and he rejected it. He must have had this moment of realization of, I should have just listened because there was a great ministry ahead. We've all been in that, in those shoes, haven't we? We've all been in that place where God has called us to something and we've completely rejected it. As we say in the liturgy, the things that we've done and the things that we've left undone, it happens to you and me all the time. And we find ourselves in this place of doubt, this place of regret, and it only takes those moments of of almost solitary confinement, this place we find ourselves in with all of this 
stay-at-home, shelter-in-place orders that are going on right now. We may find ourselves in a place of quiet, almost to where we're going crazy, bouncing off the walls. I don't know how many thousand-piece puzzles you've put together, how many times you've watched a Netflix show that you've binge-watched and you're just done because you don't know what to do because you can't just get out and be. But it's in these times where we start to question what's important. We start to listen to and question what is our call. You know, I think about Jesus in these moments. How many times did Jesus start to question his call and his ministry? While he is fully divine, he is also fully human. Even from his birth, when he was walking with Mary. And he's born into the world and Mary's got Psalm 22 and Isaiah 53 in, his, in her head. And, and all of a sudden these bone readers showed up and, and what do they do? They, they give him give her incense and myrrh, I mean, a funeral stuff. They knew where he was headed, to the cross. And all those times in Jesus' ministry where it says he went away to pray, I start to wonder if he said, can I do it? Can I do this? Can I make it to the cross? This is so much fulfilled in the Garden of Gethsemane when he says, Lord, if there's any way that this could pass me by, because he's questioning if he's going to say, I'm not going to do it. But he's greater than us. He's greater than Jonah. He did it when he went to the cross for you and for me. But what's different about it is when he's in the belly of the beast, when he goes down to hell, it's not to suffer and repent. It's not like us. He's greater than us. And I always, I always thought that he was just like us and Jonah. And for three days after Good Friday, you know that thing we call Good Friday and not Bad Friday, that he went down there to suffer, to think on the sins of the world. No, 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 no. It's something completely different. And Peter writes on this. He went down to preach the good news, which is great news for us. That's why we call it Good Friday. And so that we don't have to carry that burden anymore in this time of isolation, where we're going crazy, we don't have to think about what we're not going to do and we can start to think about what we're going to do. How we, like the people in Nineveh, get the opportunity to repent and turn back towards God because we know what Jesus did. And for those three days when he preached the good news, guess what? At Easter, here's the greatest news. That we find new life in him. As Christ was raised from the dead, so we too are raised from the dead. We too will be let out to go and do the good news. So today what I would invite you, Jonah, to do is to take this time to think about not what you haven't done for God, but instead what you're going to do for God. Because he did it for all for us on the cross and in his resurrection. May that God that strengthens you today walk with you now and always. And in Jesus' name, all God's people said, amen and amen.